Hi, everybody. So, continuing to work on that bottom skin of the tail cone. In our last video, we were starting to rivet in the stiffeners and the front two bulkheads, as well as a little uh, up front assembly. Uh, I was having a lot of fun with it, but uh, realized that I could definitely use a little bit of help. So I called my friend Ted, who always loves to get his hands dirty on some rivets. So yeah, doing this with two people <coughs> is definitely a lot easier. Now there is one thing about uh, riveting this, so lesson learned on this one. Um, it's not as thick as you might think it is. Uh, I believe it's 0.024 <coughs> in, uh, inches thick, which while uh, you know not insignificant, uh, this is just a tail cone, right? This isn't what you're sitting on. This is this is in the back. Um, when it's it's just sitting like this, kind of up in the air, it you know it has a tendency to be a little bit. Uh, you know, thin. And uh, so, one of the things that I suggest is when you're riveting this, you know, don't push down with if if you start pushing down with the rivet gun, uh, it can start to bend the skin, and you don't want that. So, you need to put an equal amount of pressure up from the bucking bar as you do with the rivet gun, uh, just so that the rivets are set very nicely. And because <clears throat> and because it's kind of suspended in air like that, and it's just that skin. Uh, uh, for instance, I have the mushroom set on my uh, river gun. You need to keep that head flat. Cannot stress this enough, because if you if you just have it over enough for the edge of your mushroom set to hit that skin anywhere, it will bend. Uh, which is another reason why I had. Uh, Ted come over to help me. Uh, I in no way. I, I already made. I made one smiley on the skin. Now, granted, it's the bottom of the tail cone, and Bondo will cover it up. But still, you know. Okay, so we went all the way to the front edge, or at least as far as we can go. <clears throat> and so now all we have to do is the back. So it's a little. So when they say when you need two seahorses for this or sawhorses, the problem is there's nowhere for them to really fit, and fit between. Uh, well, at this moment there is, but I found we found the easiest thing uh, since we didn't have two sawhorses. Since we used the back table, all you had to do was then use the large rectangular bucking bar as a back rivet plate. Which is what we did here, and it works spectacularly. And here we celebrate victory. Yep, victory does taste sweet. And just as another added little outtake here, this is what happens when us old men wear onesies to work in. He's had that thing for 20 years. He thinks he's still that slim. Anyway, enough of that ridiculousness. 
Uh, so yeah, now that all that's riveted in together, now the really interesting stuff starts to get put in, which will be in the next video. So see you soon.